Amen. Amen. Jesus is truly the light. The light of the world. Amen. So, uh, real quick, we do have a few announcements that we wanted to share uh, with you on this morning. Uh, the first is, this is Easter Sunday. Amen. We're excited about an opportunity to be here. But not only that, we are excited that we are going to be able to administer uh, communion on this morning. Amen. Amen. So yesterday we was here and we uh, passed out communion sets. Um, and we had quite a few people stop by and uh, come and pick up their communion sets that are going to participate and partake at home. And we are excited that we have an opportunity to do that. So y'all stay tuned. And after the message, Pastor Magneto will come and he will share and uh, administer communion. So make sure that you are watching and you are following along that we can all have, again, some sense of normalcy and uh, take communion together as a church family. Amen. Also, we want to uh, remind you to continue to follow us at the, uh, on the website www.gebdallas.com uh, We'll try our best to make sure that announcements and everything are updated and posted on the uh, website as well as our social media platforms. So we are across all of them. So if you uh, are social media savvy, uh, go on there as well and announcements and other information uh, will be posted. I believe just on early this morning uh, we posted something from the pastor's desk. Amen. So the pastor is constantly making sure that you are uh, informed of what's going on. Now, on this coming Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, there is information that has gone out that we will have a uh, fellowship, a church fellowship, but it will be done virtually. It will be done virtually. Pastor McNeely is going to be on Zoom. And on Zoom, we we'll all have the opportunity to log on and see one another and be able to interact with our pastor on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Now, instructions were sent out on how to participate. So I want you to, uh, if you can go back through, I'll repost it. Uh, we want you to send your name, your email address, and your uh, telephone number. Uh, email that information. Do not post it on the social media post. Email that information to the email address that is on there, which is gebnbc uh, at gmail.com. So send your information there. And once we get uh, your information, you will be included in a link to an email that's going to come out that allow you to uh, follow the prompts and uh, get on that Zoom live to be able to fellowship one another. Uh, I believe that is about all that I have, unless Pastor has any other announcements at this time. All right, all right, we're gonna keep moving. We're gonna keep going higher and celebrating our Lord and Savior. Uh, the praise team is coming back, and after the praise team, our very own pastor, Dr. William D. McNeely, will come and share with us what God has shared with him. So after the singing of the praise team, we will hear from him, we're going to go higher in the Lord. Amen? Amen.
Right, right, amen. As I always say, greatest man in the land, amen. Amen. Loving the Lord enough that you said, in spite of what is taking place, amen, we will still praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, it's another Easter Sunday, a Sunday that we celebrate. We, the children of God who have been born again, we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. We take the time to look back and to reflect on uh, what I believe was the two most terrible days in the history of the world. Uh, the Friday that he was crucified and died. The Saturday that he laid in the grave. But the greatest day in the world that was greater than that uh, that was before was he rose the third day. And he's still alive. Amen. I know he's alive because I can feel it down in my soul. Every now and then, like the mama said, a little wheel starts turning. And I know that he's there. We're not going to be before you long. Uh, we're asking that you uh, exercise caution uh, in your celebrating of uh, Easter as we come together. Amen. But just remember that uh, we still need to be very, very careful. Amen. But guess what? This too shall pass. And soon we will be back together as simple here in the house of prayer and sharing. The Lord is going to bless us. And we're going to come back together. And when we come back together, when the children of God come back together, oh, we're going to have a great time in the Lord. I want to, this is going to reflect into uh, Easter in a very special way. with this pandemic going around, this uh, COVID-19, amen, and every day seems like the death toll is raising. Um, we're wondering when will we uh, be able to go back to being, as we say, normal again. But I want us to look at it from a different perspective here. Uh, the prophet of better. And, and then you, you, you only 
borrowed maybe 200, but you're going to end up paying back seven or 800. Yeah. And, 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 and he wants to know, how long will people like that keep taking advantage of your people? And how long will you allow your people to do the things that they're doing? Amen. They, 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 they praising you today and worshiping false gods. Uh, the next day, they constantly vacillating back and forth. And, and how long, O oh Lord, will you allow this to happen? And the Lord answers Rebecca and says, well, whether you know it or not, Rebecca, I have been watching. And I know all about it. Don't fool yourself. God sees everything that we do. He hears everything that we say. And when you look at America now, how that we as a nation of people with just about almost the church will accept almost anything. It's all right. Uh, everybody has the right to do whatever they want to do, regardless of uh, how it looks in the eyes of God. Amen. I, I tell uh, and I share with choirs a lot, and I say to them, and I say to them, uh, when you sing a song, ask yourself this. If I were in the very presence of the Lord, would this song be acceptable for me to sing in his presence? And if I get an answer, no, guess what? I say I don't need to be singing that. But it seems like now everything, whatever goes, is acceptable. And, and, and so it was in the day of Habakkuk. He said, how long, O Lord, will you allow these things to happen? And finally the Lord answers and says, I've been watching. And I know all about it. And he said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Babylonian. And I'm going to fix it where they will come. And I'm going to show you just who I really am. I'm going to allow them to place you in captivity and slavery. And Rebecca, now he had, first he had complaint. Now comes the question. He says, Lord, I don't understand this. Now, they are more evil than we are. They are more unrighteous than we are. They make what we do look like a picnic. But you're going to allow them to punish us for not doing what you said to do? My yeah. And Rebecca here now is in bewilderment. And the Lord tells him, well, Rebecca, now comes the second chapter where he says, Rebecca, there's a vision to come, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to write the vision down. Yeah. Write it down. Make it plain. Yeah. He said, I want you to, to, to write it down, make it plain, that these are the things that are to come. Yeah. That Babylon shall come. That Babylon shall rule. That Babylon shall have you in captivity. The hand of the Babylonian shall be upon you. But also write in that, that hard times will come. There will be no figs on the fig trees. There will be no olives on the olive, you know, the olive branches. He said, I want you to let them know that there will be no herds in the storm. It will be hard for you, but also right that this too shall pass and it shall come to pass. And so it is, God had to get our attention. God had to get our attention. And I don't know about you, but he's got my attention. Yes, sir. He has made me realize that I've taken some things for granted. He has made me realize how, 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 how lax I've been. He made me realize how that I've been slowful and has shown me in this, these days that we're going through this pandemic that you need me more than you think you ever needed me in your life now. And now we, if we ever need you, yes. if we ever need you, everyone that hears my voice is subject to this virus. Even me, myself. I am not, but, but, but I believe in my heart. And God's going to take care of his children. Yes. God's going to watch out his children because even though they were there in captivity in Babylon, God still took care of them. And 
Rebecca said, well, Lord, even though you said it's coming, even though you said that we must bear it, and we burned it upon ourselves, but we were not following your way. Because of these things, I write it down now. I write down the vision. Yeah. So that your people will know that these are the things that are to come to pass. I say now to us this morning, great old Delta, I say to all that are listening and are watching, God now has our attention. And we need, we need to pray. We need to pray like we never prayed before. And this too shall pass. This storm shall pass over. And when the storm has passed over, do not forsake the assembly. Yes. Don't take the church for granted anymore. Do what you can to be in the house of prayer. Give God the praise that's due to him because he's due of all the praise, yes, of all the honor, of all the glory. Amen. And thank him for bringing you through the storm. Yeah. Have a shout in your heart and have praise on your lips. Uh -huh. Be like Rebecca. He says, even though there's no figs on the, uh, figs on the fig tree, even though there's no olives on the vine, even though there's no herd in the stall, yet will I rejoice. Even though now I cannot come together with the saints the way I want to in the assembly. Even though COVID-19 is running rampant. Even though we're going through what we're going through. Yet will I rejoice. Yet will I praise the Lord. Yet will I lift my voice and let you know today, this morning, he is risen. And for that fact that he is risen, by his stripes we are here. And yet will I rejoice. Yet will I rejoice yeah. in the God of my salvation. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. I believe our praise team is coming back now. As we get ready to have a communion this morning. We thank God for our ministers uh, that were uh, out on uh, yesterday. And uh, I think Reverend Rice is going to talk to us. Amen. Amen. Reverend Rice. Amen. Thank you, Pastor McNeely, for blessing us with that message on this morning. Amen. But before we move any further, we dare not extend the privilege for an opportunity for you to, uh, to accept our risen Savior as your personal Savior on today. So even while you're at home, even while you're sitting in your living room, even while you're there and comfortable, you can still accept our Lord and Savior as your personal Savior on today, for He has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So if that is you, you can, all you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe within your heart that He came and He was raised from the dead. You can be saved. But not only that, we, we extend this privilege for prayer. Now, I understand that it may be a little difficult because we are not in the same location. However, still know that prayer is still in order. Prayers are still going out. We are still soliciting your prayers, and we are still giving out prayers to those that need it. So if you are in need of prayer, you can simply uh, comment in the comment sections and pray for me. If you are in need of prayer, you can go on our website and contact us, and we'll reach out and have a telephone prayer with you. But in any event, we extend that privilege to you as well. But also, if you are a child of God, and this whole pandemic has said to you, you know what? I need to restore, renew, and regenerate my relationship with Christ. He's trying to tell me something. He's trying to uh, let me know that I need to have a better relationship with him. And you want to rededicate your life. Now, you have an opportunity, even while you're at home. All you have to do again is say, Lord, here am I. I submit myself unto you. And why should we do those things? Well, it's because of what he did for us on Calvary. It's because he gave his life 
is because he was bruised, he was whipped, and on Friday he died, but early Sunday morning, he got up out of his grave for a little old me and a little old you, and for that, we ought to be able to rejoice in the Lord and say, well, thank you, God, for what you've done for me, and for that, I know he's blessing me, and he'll continue to bless me. As a matter of fact, why you think about that, that, that why you think about what God has done for you, why you think about in your own prayer what he has done for you, why you think about the option to say, listen, I want to be saved. All you have to do is trust and believe that he loves you and he's blessing you. As a matter of fact, you can even say something like, the Lord, he's blessing me.
blood rise up in the cup and after he had blessed it, he said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine anymore till I drink it which you knew in my father's kingdom, but take it, drink ye all of it. This is my blood which is shed for the remission of sin. Paul says to us, let a man, let a woman examine themselves. Make sure that he or she is worthy to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he or she may eat it and drink it up with me, eat it and drink it down their shoes. To his own soul, not discerning the Lord about it. And for this call, there are many among you who are weak, sick, and even dead. Let us examine ourselves and ask the Lord to remove from us anything that makes us not worthy to partake of this communion on this Easter Sunday. You and I take the cup. Yeah. 